minds are a soul. In ancient China, you were called Hua Jin. In Sumeria, you were Kadakesh of the Waste Places. The Romans knew you, and the Greeks before them. The Norsemen fashioned their war helmets in your image, and the Egyptians drew your war heads in the depths of the pyramids. The Christians knew you as Prince of Darkness, Fallen Angel, the Father of Lies. You are the Horned One, Split Foot, Eyes of Everlasting Fire, the Ghost, the Finder of Souls.
Uh, uh. My name is Matthew Stevenson. I used to think I owned this museum, but after the events of the past week, I'm not so sure I can say that anymore. There were enough clues something was going on even before last Monday, but I, I was so preoccupied with preparations for the president's visit, I, I was very slow to put the pieces together. I'm liking this tape in my safe when I'm done. In case I don't make it. So someone will know at least part of the truth. I can't get the tape out of the museum. They're watching me. And at this point, they're not about to let me leave. Other than the, the bits and pieces I discovered on my own, I learned most of what follows from the translation of the Mongolian glyphs drawn on goatskin. Dr. Ruben Banks, from Boston University, the man I hired to translate the glyphs is dead. I just found him in the Capricorn room. His skull crushed. As bizarre as it may sound, I am convinced my museum is in the hands of an ancient cult that worships a deity called Washin, the binder of souls. I need to start with the ring, I think, that belongs to one of Dr. Banks' former archaeological students, Lorena Conoceros. She is the current reigning priestess of this cult. She has played upon the needs and desires of several members of the museum staff to indoctrinate them into her cult. Frank Macy's ambition and pride. I stepped on both when I took over the museum. Jordan Cooper's greed. Red Westlake's basic finality. Susanna Armstrong's thirst for public acclaim. Nick Costello's passion to be healed. Lori Wood's lust for revenge. Dr. Banks said the workmanship of the gold in Lorena's ring is Portuguese, approximately 200 years old, although the stone was crudely cut and fashioned much earlier. He said that Lorena was very proud of the fact that she was directly descended from one of the first Portuguese families to establish trade with China in the late 18th century. There was some intermarriage between her family and one of the noble families of China, almost unheard of in that day. And that's how the ring, a sort of badge of office, he, he thinks, was passed to her from a woman on the Chinese side of the family. The glyphs on the goatskin are a copy of a prophecy set down by an ancestor of Lorena's called Xiao. She was a Chinese priestess in the court of Genghis Khan. Xiao tells of a distant time when Khan will be born again to subjugate the earth in the name of the binder of the souls. The Capricorn head serves as a sort of repository for captured souls that are bent to the will of Hua Jin. Genghis Khan was one. World leaders in this distant future Shao speaks of will follow once Khan rises. Unfortunately for the cult, 
the Capricorn head was buried with Genghis Khan. And none of Lorena's ancestors could get their hands on it until Temujin's tomb was discovered in 1992. She's been tracking the head ever since, waiting for a chance. It's clear now she made an attempt to steal the head in Boston last year. When that failed, she came here and got a job at this museum. The cult's first victim is obviously meant to be the President of the United States. Well, it's second victim anyway. I don't believe in coincidence. Dr. Banks said, Khan's spirit will need a new body. And whatever forces are at work here have obviously decided there's something fitting about yours truly. <laughs> the Genghis Khan of Wall Street. Being that body. Lorena hopes to drug me with some ancient concoction that will not only prepare me for the transfer of Khan's spirit, but will pretty much remove me as a threat to their plans. I'll be little more than an empty shell. Hallucinating. Speechless, but not brainless. Because Dr. Banks says the spirit host must prove itself worthy through a series of trials or tests. Being a rat in a maze is not how I want to spend my final hours of existence. And I don't relish giving up the use of my body to a 12th century Mongolian warrior. I intend to fight back. I know how fantastic this all sounds. I can only hope, if I can't stop them, enough evidence remains to prove what I say on this tape is true. This is Matthew Stevenson. May God have mercy on my soul. Good luck. 